Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to master SPA on an F123. As usual I'm going to take you through the lap in intricate detail breaking down each breaking point, turning point and then after I'm going to be doing a lap at full speed explaining it while driving like I said at full speed. With that being said let's be getting into the lap. So while starting the lap you want to have the car as straight as possible and see this little line this is your drs detection line and you'll be opening it asap while starting the lap bring the car over to the left hand side of the track and start pointing towards that house ahead of you as you can see to the left hand side of the track there is these black specks on the road this is what the marbles are if you go on the marbles you lose grip while driving obvious statement i know so you have to avoid these, especially in a qualifying session or in online races, even races against AI in fact. In time trial, they seem not to be that effective, they don't really seem to do anything, but once you get to a qualifying or race session, they can be very negative towards your grip output on the car. So keep that in mind and try to avoid them at all costs. And like I say, point towards that house ahead of you. Just after the 100 meter board, you'll be hitting the brake as hard as possible and starting the trail brake when you get to the 50 meter board. What's really interesting about turn one, in my opinion, as you can see, as you arrive to the apex, it falls downhill a little bit. So what happens with the car? You start to oversteer at this moment in time. And as you start to turn in, as you arrive to this point, the rear of the car will naturally start to slide as you go downhill. As a very quick and brief explanation is when you go downhill in a racing car, you have less grip. When you go uphill, you have more grip. Hence why Eau Rouge and Radion is so easily flat out. Most commonly in the intermediate conditions as well on this modern game with these modern cars. Whereas if when you're going down Eau Rouge and Radion, the opposite way around of course you actually very much struggle to take it flat out. Try that experiment yourself and you'll start to find out the intricate details of car dynamics as well. So as you arrive to the apex, it's critical not to actually use any of the inside curbing as it's very slippery and will cause you a lot of grip loss and traction loss as you arrive to the exit of the corner, opening up the steering wheel. What is also critical is to be using up all the curb on the exit and trying to use as much road as possible all the way up to the white line in fact but again don't drive over the white line as that will cause you a track invalidation coming up to Arud and Radion you're going to be easily flat out and just choose the path of least resistance and as you rise up over the hill DRS wide open keep the car in the middle of the road and you'll be flying down to the next braking zone what will be around 70 meters you do not have an official marker board here but like i say 70 meters around about here is a good point to break it's not so critical to be super 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 late on the brakes here what is more critical is to keep the car under control and precise so when you arrive to this apex you have no sliding and your car and you have full confidence to start setting up the next sequence of corners Effectively, this first apex, in a relative terms, doesn't really matter. Once you get to the end of the curbing as well, start to turn in the car. You'll be looking to avoid the inside curbing, but get on the white line to open up the next left-hander as much as possible. But like I say, in relative terms, this corner is just a corner for setting up the next apex. It does not really matter in relative terms to lap time. The next apex matters way more in terms of lap time and extracting the most from yourself and the car. What's critical here is to get over the inside curbing as much as possible and put your left hand tyres on the AstroTurf on the left hand side. The reason for this is the AstroTurf is smooth but as you can see once I go over the curbing it's very bumpy. So if you're driving over the bumpy surface you lose grip, if you're driving over the smooth surface you maintain grip. Easy explanation. I think everyone could understand that already. Um, but sometimes in racing, these small details can lead to literal tenths of difference per corner. 
What you want to be doing on the exit here is getting as far to the left hand side as possible to open up the next right hander. The further left you get without going on these marbles, of course, as I talked about earlier, they will cost you grip and lose you lap time. So as far left as possible without going on the marbles will open up this next apex as much as possible. But using as much of this inside curbing as you can, even to this sort of concrete surface on the right hand side of the curb. This will just open up the corner much, much more and allow you to get under power sooner. On the exit, use up all the road possible and you'll be bringing the car all the way to that white line. Come off the inside, outside curbing, I should say. Come off the outside curbing and you'll be flying down to one of the most difficult braking points actually on the track, in my opinion. It's downhill and it's very much known for understeer. So it's critical to not lock your front and not lock your rear tires and have the perfect braking balance into this apex more so than any other corner on this track in my opinion because any slight imperfection as you're braking and if you lock the front or rear will cost you a significant amount of time let alone to mention the overheating of the surface of the tire what will continue to hurt your lap time as you go for the next sequence of high speed corners a bit of an esports trick here that esports drivers do and top level drivers do is they point their car and get two wheels on this outside curbing and the braking. The reason for this is it just opens up the track a little bit more and you can see a bit more of the apex It opens up the radius angle of the corner. And in very basic summary, the more radius angle you have of a corner, generally the faster speed you can carry through. So as you arrive to the apex, you want to be getting not on the inside curbing, but you want to be hugging the inside as much as possible. And as soon as you start to see this outside curbing come into your view, get back on the power, bring the car over to the left hand side. And as soon as you're full power, bring the car back over to the right and get two wheels on this outside curbing as much as possible. Try to get two wheels on this inside curbing as well, but do not go on the green astroturf on the inside. The flat surface will actually not help you in this situation it will cause the car to bottom out as the difference in height between the curbing and the flat surface is so extreme that it will cause a bottoming out unlike the corner i mentioned earlier at the end of sector one on the exit of the no-name corner use up all the road possible and bring the car back over to the left before you get to the grass you'll be flying into this next apex pull on and it's going to be a slight lift in seventh gear and just keep it fully committed on the exit. Keep the car to the middle of the road and you'll be going up to what I think is called the Fangio chicane. I think it's also called Piff Path sometimes among drivers. You'll be braking when the curb starts on the left hand side of the track. This is critical in my opinion not to use the outside curbing as it allows you more car stability and for the car to be ready to use this inside curbing as well. The precision of your driving will make the literal difference between spinning on this apex or not. If you're able to get the car successfully on this inside part of the curb, you'll have a good, stable and grippy foundation for your car. If you're only able to get here, you will likely have a big step of oversteer and lose upwards of three or four temps. Avoid the grass on the exit as this will cause you a grip loss of your statement, I know. As you arrive to the left-hander, you want to be getting two wheels on the inside curbing. Try not to go all the way to the inside curbing here, as it will decrease the radius angle of the corner and leave your car very tight on the exit here. As you're arriving, also if you're tight on the apex, you risk clipping the glass here and losing possible grip. As you're arriving to the outside of this corner, you want to be using up all the road possible, getting right up to that white line. As you get over to the left, it's really difficult on this corner actually. You have two approaches. You can either risk it all and be completely on the limit and get two wheels on that outside curbing in the braking zone, or you can avoid the curb in the braking zone. What will be slower, but will bring you more consistency in your lap time. For this example, we're gonna be going on the outside curbing as it's the fastest and I wanna do my best to educate you at home on how to be as fast as possible as well. So like I say, approach this curb at a very aggressive angle because if you approach it at a flat angle or at a zero degree angle let's say um you'll have two wheels on the grass before you arrive to the curb and that will be a disaster 
You're looking to approach the curb at this start of an angle, so you're avoiding the grass at all times, and you start to turn in naturally when that curb ends. You have two options again on this apex. You can either take the inside curbing or not. The benefit of taking the inside curbing will bring more minimum speed in the corner, whereas it will give you a worse exit. Avoiding the inside curbing will give you a uh, worse minimum speed in the corner but a better exit onto the straight it depends a lot on your driving style to be honest both the approaches are just as fast as each other in my experience use up all the road on the exit and flat out good opportunity to take a bit of a breather here as you look to choose a line of least distance and least resistance for the tires going forward driving to the left hander easily flat out now the bus stops she Pain. Oh, so difficult to master. Just around the 100 meter board, you'll be looking to brake as hard as you can and keep the car hard to the left. And as you arrive at the apex, it can become a little bit bumpy, so it will become easy to lock up the rear axle. As you can see here, there's a bump in the road. It's very difficult to see in many lights, but you can just about see, if I go into nose camera, you can see the bump to the left hand side. If you're following the white line, you'll see it go uphill a little bit and then disappear, indicating that the bump is there. And with that being said, that will cause you to lock up the front or lock up the rear tire if you're not careful and if you're not perfect with your braking input. So, much like the corner from earlier then, that you have to be as perfect as you can be with your braking input to nail this corner. If you're slightly imperfect and you have a rear lockup especially, it will cost you a lot of time during the chicane. Not only in the corner, but the exit as well. In a qualifying scenario, it won't be too detrimental, but in a racing scenario where tyre wear and consistency is more of a factor, you could really destroy your race pace by doing this repetitively. You'll be looking just to get two wheels on this inside curbing as that will help you get back to the middle of the road on the exit to set up the very final apex of the lap. So like I say, bring the car to the middle of the road and carrying good minimum speed here. Roughly when this white line is, is a good time to sort of turn in. Do not take the inside curbing as it will cause the car to jump, understeer and oversteer basically all at the same time as the bumps on the curb will cause instability in the car. So only go up to that white line and bring the car as straight as possible on the exit. And now we're going to go for a full speed lap here at Spa, coming down into turn one. Like I say, 100 meter board, down into third gear. The car will rotate as you down the hill and then use up all the road on the exit. Up into seven, eight. Easily flat out as we rise up over the crest. Choose the path of least distance and at least resistance for the tyre. Opening DRS as soon as possible, arriving towards the end of the first sector split here. Like I say, 70 metre board, and going down into fifth gear for the first apex, and then fourth for the second, short shift back to fifth, back over to the left, through the right hand, use up all the road on the exit. And you see, looking for the curb zone on the left hand side, and now looking to bring the car to the curb, to the left, to the right, and to the left again and trying to maximize the exit as much as possible just a lift as you arrive to pull on and i'm going a bit wide on my apex but just about kept it on the track in doing so break when the curb starts on the left hand side and use up all the curb on the inside and transition the car with two wheels on the inside curbing and again pointing the car quite aggressively to the curb on the outside and for this example missing the curb stone and looking for a better exit in doing so into one of the longest flat out sections on the track. Through now Blanchemont, good overtaking opportunity come race day, easily flat out come qualifying day. 100 meter board, bus stop chicane, down into third gear, let the car rotate, two wheels on the inside curb, middle of the track, through the left hander, and now back on the power as hard as possible. And that is the run to line here in Spa and hopefully this video been helpful and informative to you on how you can improve your pace around the spa circuit thank you so much for watching i've been brendan lee and i'll catch you in the next video gracias ciao ciao bye bye